Introduction The history of human civilization is an intricate tapestry woven from the threads of countless societies and cultures. Yet, some civilizations remain elusive, obscured by the sands of time and the scant remnants they left behind. Among these enigmatic ancient cultures is the Elamite civilization, which thrived in the southwestern part of modern-day Iran for over two millennia, from around 2700 BCE to 539 BCE. The Elamites, a people with a distinct language and culture, made significant contributions to the development of the ancient Near East. In this article, we will embark on a journey to uncover the mysteries of the Elamite civilization, exploring their history, culture, and impact on the ancient world. The history of the Elamite civilization dates back to around 2700 BCE and spans over three millennia. Was an ancient civilization centered in the far west and southwest of modern-day Iran, stretching from the lowlands of what is now Khuzestan and Ilam province as well as a small part of southern Iraq. The modern name Elam stems from the Sumerian transliteration Elam, along with the later Akkadian Elamtu, and the Elamite Haltamdi. Elamite states were among the leading political forces of the ancient Near East. In classical literature, Elam was also known as Susiana, a name derived from its capital Susa. The Elamites established a powerful and distinct culture that thrived alongside their Mesopotamian neighbors. Known for their advanced agricultural practices, impressive architectural achievements, and intricate artistry, the Elamites left behind a rich legacy. From their early city-states to their eventual incorporation into the Persian Empire, the Elamite civilization played a significant role in shaping the ancient Near East. Throughout their history, they engaged in trade, warfare, and cultural exchange with various empires, leaving behind a remarkable archaeological record that continues to captivate historians and archaeologists today. During the Chalcolithic period, Copper Age the emergence of written records from around 3000 BC also parallels Sumerian history, where slightly earlier records have been found. In the Old Elamite period, Middle Bronze Age, Elam consisted of kingdoms on the Iranian plateau, centered in Anshan, and from the mid-2nd millennium BC, it was centered in Susa in the Khuzestan lowlands. Origins of Elamite Civilization The heartland of the Elamite civilization, Elam, was situated in the region now known as Khuzestan in southwestern Iran. The Elamites were a non-Semitic people who developed their own unique language, known as Elamite. They established several powerful city-states and engaged in trade with neighboring civilizations such as Mesopotamia. This land was characterized by a diverse geography, with vast plains, towering mountains, and the mighty Karan River, which played a crucial role in the development of Elamite society. The Elamites inhabited a network of cities, the most prominent being Susa, modern Shush, which served as the capital of Elam for much of its history. The fertile plains of the region made agriculture a primary source of sustenance, while the proximity to the Persian Gulf allowed for trade and cultural exchange with other ancient civilizations. The Elamite Society The Elamites were an independent and unique people, distinct from their Mesopotamian and Persian neighbors. The society was organized into a city-state system, with each city being ruled by a local king. The Elamite civilization did not create a centralized empire, and this decentralization was a defining feature of their culture. This structure allowed for a degree of autonomy within the cities, fostering a mosaic of regional identities. 2000 BCE Rise of the Elamite Kingdom by 2000 BCE, the Elamite city-states had consolidated into a centralized kingdom, known as the Elamite Kingdom. The Elamite rulers were able to establish control over a vast territory, which included parts of present-day Iran and Iraq. During this period, the Elamites engaged in conflicts with neighboring civilizations, particularly with the Akkadian Empire of Mesopotamia. 1600 BCE Elamite Golden Age the Elamite civilization reached its peak during the 16th and 15th centuries BCE, known as the Elamite Golden Age. The Elamite Kingdom became a major regional power and established strong diplomatic ties with other civilizations, such as Egypt and the Hittite Empire. The Elamite capital, Susa, flourished as a center of trade, art, and architecture. 
language and writing. The Elamites had a distinctive language, which is one of the primary sources of our knowledge about their civilization. Elamite script is among the oldest writing systems in the world, with inscriptions dating back to the early 2nd millennium BCE. It is not related to any other known language, making it a significant challenge for modern scholars to decipher. Early Elamite writing used a cuneiform script, similar to the one employed by the Sumerians and later by the Akkadians. Over time, the Elamites developed their own version of cuneiform, which contained over a thousand different characters. The Elamite language endonym of Elam as a country appears to have been Hatamdi, in linear Elamite, or Haltami, cuneiform Elamite, Haltamdi. Exonyms included the Sumerian names and Elam, the Akkadian Elamu, masculine slash neuter, and Elamitu, feminine, meant resident of Susiana, Elamite. In prehistory, Elam was centered primarily in modern Khuzestan and Elam. The name Khuzestan is derived ultimately from Old Persian, Huja, meaning Susa slash Elam. This became Middle Persian, Huz, Susiana, and in modern Persian, Suz, compounded with the toponymic suffix stan, place. Geography In geographical terms, Susiana basically represents the Iranian province of Khuzestan around the river Karun. In ancient times, several names were used to describe this area. The ancient geographer Ptolemy was the earliest to call the area Susiana, referring to the country around Susa. Another ancient geographer, Strabo, viewed Elam and Susiana as two different geographic regions. He referred to Elam, land of the LMA, as primarily the highland area of Khuzestan. Disagreements over the location also exist in the Jewish historical sources says Daniel T. Potts. Some ancient sources draw a distinction between Elam as the highland area of Khuzestan and Susiana as the lowland area. Yet in other ancient sources Elam and Susiana seem equivalent. Elam's place in history. Prehistorically the area was well settled during the Ubaid period and shared many aspects of Ubaid cultures. The Elamite civilization, though decentralized, left a significant mark on the ancient world. They were in constant interaction with neighboring cultures, notably the Mesopotamians and the Persians, who would later incorporate elements of Elamite culture into their own. Elamites were known for their military prowess and frequently clashed with neighboring powers. One of the most famous interactions in Elamite history was the Elamite Kassite dynasty, a period when Elam and Babylonia were under the rule of a Kassite monarch. The Elamites also had notable encounters with the Assyrians and the Persians. Eventually, in 539 BCE, the Achaemenid Persian Empire, under Cyrus the Great, conquered Elam, bringing an end to this ancient civilization. Knowledge of Elamite history remains largely fragmentary, reconstruction being based on mainly Mesopotamian, Sumerian, Akkadian, Assyrian, and Babylonian, sources. The history of Elam is conventionally divided into three periods, spanning more than two millennia. The period before the first Elamite period is known as the Proto-Elamite period. Proto-Elamite, c. 3200, c. 2700 BC, Proto-Elamite script in Susa. Old Elamite period, c. 2700, c. 1500 BC, earliest documents until the Sakalma dynasty. Middle Elamite period, c. 1500, c. 1100 BC, Anzanite dynasty until the Babylonian invasion of Susa. Neo-Elamite period, c. 1100-540 BC, characterized by Assyrian and Median influence. 539 BC marks the beginning of the Achaemenid period. Proto-Elamite, circa 3500, c. 2700 BC. Proto-Elamite civilization grew up east of the Tigris and Euphrates alluvial plains, it was a combination of the lowlands and the immediate highland areas to the north and east. At least three Proto-Elamite states merged to form Elam, Anshan, Awan, and Shamashki. References to Awan are generally older than those to Anshan, and some scholars suggest that both states encompassed the same territory, in different eras, see Hansen, Encyclopedia Iranica. To this core Shushiana was periodically annexed and broken off. In addition, 
Some proto-Elamite sites are found well outside this area, spread out on the Iranian plateau, such as Waraksh, Sialk, now a suburb of the modern city of Kashan, and Jaroft in Kerman province. The state of Elam was formed from these lesser states as a response to invasion from Sumer during the old Elamite period. Elamite strength was based on an ability to hold these various areas together under a coordinated government that permitted the maximum interchange of the natural resources unique to each region. Traditionally, this was done through a federated governmental structure. Old Elamite period, circa 2700, c. 1500 BC. The Old Elamite period began around 2700 BC. Historical records mention the conquest of Elam by Enmebarajizi, the Sumerian king of Kish in Mesopotamia. Three dynasties ruled during this period. Twelve kings of each of the first two dynasties, those of Awan, or Avan, c. 2400, c. 2100 BC, and Samashki, circa 2100. C. 1970 BC, are known from a list from Susa dating to the Old Babylonian period. Two Elamite dynasties said to have exercised brief control over parts of Sumer in very early times include Awan and Hamatsi, and likewise, several of the stronger Sumerian rulers, such as the Anatom of Lagash and Lugalan Mundu of Adab, are recorded as temporarily dominating Elam. Awan Dynasty The Awan Dynasty, 2350-2150 BC, 21, was partly contemporary with that of the Mesopotamian emperor Sargon of Akkad, who not only defeated the Awan king Luishan and subjected Susa, but attempted to make the East Semitic Akkadian the official language there. From this time, Mesopotamian sources concerning Elam become more frequent, since the Mesopotamians had developed an interest in resources, such as wood, stone, and metal, from the Iranian plateau, and military expeditions to the area became more common. With the collapse of Akkad under Sargon's great-great-grandson, Sharkali Sheri, Elam declared independence under the last Awan king, Kudakin Shushanak, circa 2240, c. 2220 BC, and threw off the Akkadian language, promoting in its place the brief linear Elamite script. Kudakin Shushanak conquered Susa and Anshan, and seems to have achieved some sort of political unity. Following his reign, the Awan dynasty collapsed as Elam was temporarily overrun by the Gyudi, another pre-Iranic people from what is now northwest Iran who also spoke a language isolate. Shamashki dynasty A century later, Shulji, the Sumerian king from the Neo-Sumerian Empire, launched a campaign to recapture the city of Susa and its surrounding regions. The period under the rule of the Shamashki dynasty witnessed Elam facing intermittent assaults from both the Sumerians of Mesopotamia and the Gudians from northwestern Iran. These attacks were often followed by intervals of peace and diplomatic negotiations. The Elamite state of Shamashki also extended its influence into northern Iran, possibly even reaching as far as the Caspian Sea. In a sign of diplomatic engagement, Shu Sin, the king of Uar, offered one of his daughters in marriage to a prince from Anshan, a prominent Elamite city. However, the power of the Sumerians was gradually waning. Ibi Sin, reigning in the 21st century BCE, found it increasingly challenging to make substantial inroads into Elam. In a pivotal turn of events in 2004 BCE, the Elamites, in alliance with the inhabitants of Susa and under the leadership of King Kandatu, the sixth ruler of the Shamashki dynasty, achieved a remarkable feat they not only successfully captured the city of Uar but also took Ibi Sin into captivity, thus marking the end of the third dynasty of Uar. Subsequently, the Akkadian kings of Isin, the successor state to Uar, launched a concerted effort to expel the Elamites from Uar. They undertook extensive reconstruction of the city and, notably, successfully recovered the statue of Nana, a revered cultural artifact that the Elamites had looted during their conquest. This episode underscored the determination of Mesopotamian powers to reclaim their lost territories and safeguard their cultural heritage. Sakalma Dynasty The subsequent dynasty, commonly referred to as the Sakalma Dynasty, circa 1970 circa 1770 BC, derived its name from the title, Great Regents, held by its members. It is also known as the Apartheid Dynasty, named after its founder, Eberat or Aparti. 
This dynasty's timeline roughly overlapped with the old Assyrian Empire and the old Babylonian period in Mesopotamia. It emerged about 60 years after the Akkadian-speaking Old Assyrian Empire in Upper Mesopotamia and was nearly 75 years older than the Old Babylonian Empire. This period is often considered perplexing and challenging to reconstruct. A party I is credited with its establishment. Throughout this era, Susa remained under Elamite control, while Akkadian-speaking Mesopotamian states such as Larsa and Isin made persistent efforts to recapture the city. Around 1850 BC, Qutermabuk, who appeared to be the ruler of another Akkadian state situated to the north of Larsa, managed to place his son, Warad Sin, on the throne of Larsa. Warad Sin's brother, Rim Sin, subsequently succeeded him and achieved significant conquests in southern Mesopotamia for the city of Larsa. Trade with the Indus Valley Civilization Extensive archaeological evidence indicates that maritime trade routes between Africa and Asia have an ancient history that dates back thousands of years. During this era, trade connections flourished between the Indus Valley Civilization and the cities of Mesopotamia and Elam, as evidenced by numerous findings of Indus artifacts. Notably, these artifacts were discovered in the excavations at Susa, shedding light on the extent of this trade network. The artifacts found included various objects crafted from shell species commonly found along the Indus coast, such as Tribonella pyrum and Fasciolaria trapezium. These shells, dated from approximately 2500 to 2000 BC, were uncovered in archaeological sites across Mesopotamia and Susa. Among the discoveries were carnelian beads, likely originating from the Indus Valley. What makes these beads particularly intriguing is their etched designs in white, a technique believed to have been developed by the Harapans, suggesting their import from the Indus Valley. Trade and cultural exchanges between these regions, however, appear to have diminished after 1900 BC, coinciding with the decline and eventual disappearance of the Indus Valley civilization. This marked the end of a significant chapter in the history of maritime trade, highlighting the interconnectedness and exchange of goods, ideas, and techniques between these ancient civilizations. Middle Elamite period, circa 1500, c. 1100 BC. Anshan and Susa. The Middle Elamite era commenced with the ascent of the Anshanite dynasties circa 1500 BC. This period was marked by a noticeable Elamization of Susa, where the ruling kings adopted the title, King of Anshan and Susa. While the initial Kadinuids, who reigned during this time, around 1500 to 1400 BC, continued to make frequent use of the Akkadian language in their inscriptions, their successors, the Ijahalkids and Shatrukids, increasingly employed Elamite for their official records. Concurrently, Elamite language and culture gained prominence in Susiana, signifying a significant cultural shift. The Kadinuids, a group of five rulers whose exact affiliation remains uncertain, are identified by their use of the older title, King of Susa and of Anshan. They also referred to themselves as, Servants of Kirwasher, an Elamite deity, thereby introducing the pantheon of the highlands to Susiana. It's worth noting that Susa is one of the world's oldest cities, with a history dating back to approximately 4200 BC. Since its establishment, Susa has held a central position in the Elamite power structure and later within Persian dynasties. Susa's zenith of power occurred during the Middle Elamite period when it served as the regional capital, underscoring its historical significance in the region. Kassite Invasions The Ijhawkids, who reigned from approximately 1400 to 1210 BC, boasted a known lineage of ten rulers, though the actual number may have been larger. Notably, several of them entered matrimonial alliances with Kassite princesses. The Kassites, a unique linguistic group hailing from the Zagros Mountains, had previously assumed control of Babylonia shortly after its sacking by the Hittite Empire in 1595 BC. During this era, the Kassite king of Babylon, Kurigalza II, had ascended the throne with the backing of Ashur Yublit I of the Middle Assyrian Empire, 1366 to 1020 BC. Around 1320 BC, Kurigalza II briefly occupied Elam and later, circa 1230 BC, another Kassite monarch, Kashtiliash IV, engaged in a conflict with Elam that ultimately ended unsuccessfully. 
the power of the Kassite Babylonian realm diminished as it came under the influence of the northern Mesopotamian Middle Assyrian Empire. Under the rule of the Ijhakids, Akkadian inscriptions became a rarity, and the gods of the Elamite highlands found a firm footing in Susa. In this transitional period, the cultural and political landscape of the region witnessed significant changes, as Elam successfully repelled Kassite incursions, signifying a shift in the balance of power. Elamite Empire Under the reign of the Shatrukids, approximately from 1210 to 1100 BC, the Elamite Empire achieved the pinnacle of its power. Led by Shutrik Nakhunt and his three sons, Kutur Nakhunt II, Shilhakin Shushanak, and Kutalatushin Shushanak, the Elamites conducted frequent military campaigns into Kassite Babylonia. Notably, this period coincided with the expansion of the Assyrian Empire, which was also exerting its influence over Babylonia. Simultaneously, the Shatrukids were actively engaged in extensive construction projects, displaying their commitment to enhancing the cultural and architectural landscape. These efforts involved the construction and restoration of opulent temples, not only in Susa but throughout their empire. Shutrik Nakhun's military prowess was evident in his raids on Babylonia, where he brought back a trove of trophies, including the statues of Marduk and Manishtushu, the Manishtushu obelisk, the steel of Hammurabi, and the steel of Naramsin. In 1158 BC, as much of Babylonia had fallen under the rule of Ashurdan I of Assyria, Shutrik Nakhunt and the Elamites secured a decisive victory against the Kassites. This victory resulted in the demise of the Kassite king of Babylon, Zababashumidan, who was succeeded briefly by his eldest son, Kuturnakhunt. However, Kuturnakhunt's reign was short-lived, as he was soon ousted by the native Akkadian-speaking Babylonians, marking a significant turning point in the region's history. Neo-Elamite period, circa 1100-540 BC. Neo-Elamite I, circa 1100, circa 770 BC. This era remains veiled in historical obscurity, with very limited knowledge available. Anshan retained elements of Elamite influence during this time, although the extent of this influence remains uncertain. There are indications of unsuccessful alliances formed by Elamites, Babylonians, Chaldeans, and various other groups in attempts to counter the formidable Neo-Assyrian Empire. 911 to 605 BC. It's worth noting that Marbidiapla Usher, who reigned as the Babylonian king from 984 to 979 BC, had Elamite roots, showcasing the intricate intermingling of cultures in the region. Additionally, historical records mention the Elamites engaging in a feudal struggle alongside Babylonian king Marduk Balasuikbi against the Assyrian forces under Shamshiadad v. 823 to 811 BC. Neo-Elamite II, c. 770 to 646 BC. The later Neo-Elamite period witnessed a notable influx of Indo-European-speaking Iranians onto the Iranian plateau. Assyrian records from around 800 BC make a clear distinction by mentioning the powerful Medes, encompassing various groups such as the Medes, Persians, Parthians, and Sagartians. Among these migrating tribes were the Parsu, initially documented in 844 BC as residing along the southeastern shores of Lake Ermaya. Over time, these Parsu and other Iranian groups played a pivotal role in the transformation of the Elamites' original homeland, turning the Iranian plateau into what we now recognize as Persia. This wave of newly arrived Iranian peoples did not escape Assyrian domination and were largely considered subjects of the Neo-Assyrian Empire until the latter part of the 7th century. Neo-Elamite III, 646-539 BC The extent of devastation was somewhat less than the boasts of Ashurbanipal had led to believe. A weakened and fractured Elamite rule resurfaced shortly after the upheaval, led by Shudernakhunt, the son of Humbanyamina III, distinguished from Shudernakhunt, the son of Indata, who ruled as a minor king in the early 6th century. In the century leading up to the Achaemenids' ascendancy, the Elamite royalty was fragmented across various small kingdoms, with the once united Elamite nation having been dismantled and absorbed into the Assyrian dominion. Even as the 7th century drew to a close, rulers such as Shudernakhunt, Kalutashin Shushanak, 
and Atacumin Shashanak continued to bear the titles, King of Anzan and of Susa, or, Expander of the Kingdom of Anzan and of Susa. This persisted despite the fact that, during this time, the Achaemenid Persians had already begun asserting their dominance over Anshan under Assyrian oversight. 539 BCE Persian Conquest of Elam In 539 BCE, the Persian Empire, led by Cyrus the Great, conquered the Elamite region and incorporated it into their empire. The Elamite civilization became assimilated into the Persian Empire, adopting Persian customs, language, and administration. This marked the end of the independent Elamite civilization, but its legacy continued to resonate in the history and culture of the region. Elamites, 187 BC, 224 AD Elamites was the location of the death of Antiochus III the Great who was killed while pillaging a temple of Bel in 187 BC. Following the rise and fall of the Achaemenid Empire and the Seleucid Empire, a new dynasty of Elamite rulers established Elamites from 147 BC to 224 AD, usually under the suzerainty of the Parthian Empire, until the advent of the unified Sasanian Empire in 224 AD. Art and Architecture Elamite art and architecture were marked by their unique aesthetics, which were different from their neighboring cultures. Elamite temples and ziggurats were characterized by their distinctive designs, and their pottery and metalwork showcased a rich artistic tradition. The famous bronze statue of Queen Napere Su, discovered at Susa, is a testament to the advanced metalworking skills of the Elamites. Their art often depicted religious motifs, as religion played a significant role in their culture, with multiple deities worship, statuettes. Dated to approximately the 12th century BC, gold and silver figurines of Elamite worshippers are shown carrying a sacrificial goat. These divine and royal statues were meant to assure the king of the enduring protection of the deity, well-being and a long life. Works which showed a ruler in his performance of a ritual action were intended to eternalize the effectiveness of such deeds. Found near the temple of Inshushanak in Susa, these statuettes would have been considered charged with beneficial power. Seals Elamite seals reached their peak of complexity in the 4th millennium BC when their shape became cylindrical rather than stamp-like. Seals were primarily used as a form of identification and were often made out of precious stones. Because seals for different time periods had different designs and themes, seals and seal impressions can be used to track the various phases of the Elamite Empire and can teach a lot about the empire in ways which other forms of documentation cannot. The seal pictured shows two seated figures holding cups with a man in front of them wearing a long robe next to a table. Statue of Queen Napere Su This life-size votive offering of Queen Napere Su was commissioned around 1300 BC in Susa, Iran. It is made of copper using the lost wax casting method and rests on a solid bronze frame that weighs 1,750 kg 3, this statue is different from many other Elamite statues of women because it resembles male statues due to the wide belt on the dress and the patterns which closely resemble those on male statues. Steel of Untashnapirisha The steel of the Elamite king, Untashnapirisha was believed to have been commissioned in the 12th century BC. It was moved from the original religious capital of Choga Zanbil to the city of Susa by the successor king, Shutrik Nanante. Four registers of the steel are left. The remains depict the god in Shushanak validating the legitimacy of who is thought to be Shutrik Nanante. In the periphery are two priestesses, deity hybrids of fish and women holding streams of water, and two half-man half-muflon guardians of the sacred tree. The names of the two priestesses are carved on their arms. Religion The Elamites practiced polytheism. Due to scarcity of sources, Past scholars assumed that Elamite religion must have been characterized by the ill-defined character of the individual gods and goddesses. Most of them were not only ineffable beings whose real name was either not uttered or was unknown, but also sublime ideas, not to be exactly defined by the human race. Worship also varied between localities. However, more recent scholarship shows that Elamite deities most likely were not any less defined than these of their Sumerian, Akkadian and Hurrian neighbors. Legacy 
Despite the complete devastation of the Elamite nation by the Assyrians, new political entities emerged in the region as Assyrian power waned. Among the beneficiaries of the Assyrian decline were the Iranian tribes, whose presence in the area north of Elam, particularly around Lake Urmia, is documented in Assyrian texts dating back to the 9th century BC. Subsequently, following the Scythian conquest of that region in 653 BC, Tyspes, the son of Achaemenes, successfully captured Elamite Anshan in the mid-7th century BC. This marked the establishment of a core that would later expand into the Persian Empire. During this time, these Iranian tribes largely existed as vassals under Assyrian dominion. The Medes, Manaeans, and Persians had been paying tribute to Assyria from as early as the 10th century BC, a practice that continued until the death of Ashurbanipal in 627 BC. Following Ashurbanipal's demise, the Medes assumed a pivotal role in the ultimate downfall of the weakened Assyrian Empire in 612 BC.